Welcome to the Daily Update, where I'll go over the action in the market for Thursday, August 10th, and then we'll see how things look for Friday, August 11th. We had the CPI come out. It was with great anticipation. It came in pretty much as expected. The market reacted positively right off the bat. We went just above R2, set the high for the day, and then started to decline after that. We tried to hit support at a couple of different points on the way down, but it just didn't really work out. By the time everything was said and done, we ended up being virtually unchanged, only with a slight positive upward move. Things have not really changed all that much. We're still looking more negative. We're still below support. Things are slanted more in the negative favor. So we just have to go with that for right now to see if things are going to fall a little bit more, find support, and then bounce up off of that. Or are we going to tread more or less sideways? But the fact that we've closed at the same basic place for three days in a row now shows that there's not a lot of conviction. We're leaning more towards the negative side, but it doesn't mean the market is falling apart at the same time. Beware that I am planning to do an online course. I've had enough response now that I'm going to go ahead and do that. I am going to cover some different strategies. Again, this is going to be pretty high level, just basic stuff. I go into more detail in the courses that I teach. I'll also be talking about support and resistance, mainly on an end of day level. It's really just to get an idea of how come we're stopping at this place when we're going up or down. And it might not always be the S&P 500. It could be in another index. Then I'm going to go through a little bit of my approach to technical analysis. It's a little bit different than other people out there. Something I also want to talk about that I've added to this is what are the times that would work out for you? For me personally, it would be during market hours, usually an hour or two after the market opens. We could end up doing the course during the day and then I can record it for those people that can't make it. Or does the evening work for you? The weekends are not good for me because that's when I'm preparing all of the other videos that I post. So if you have any feedback on that, let me know. Let's go back and talk about what happened. We did have a gap higher open. There was positive reaction to the CPI. We went above R1 at 44.93, and then we went up slightly above R2 at 45.18. That set the high for the day. Then prices spent the rest of the day declining. We went back below R2, R1, the daily pivot at 44.77. Then we went down to the unchanged level. That acted as support. Prices chopped below the unchanged level and the daily pivot to close almost unchanged. So we were up 0.03%, virtually unchanged, but it goes in the books as a positive day. Volume continues to be below average. And the technicals are negative now. In the short term, we're a little bit oversold still, but that still has more room to go down if that's what the market does. There are some positive things in the background that I will try to point out as we're going through this, but it continues to be about inflation and interest rates. The market will be receiving another inflation report on Friday with the PPI coming out. The comments that we can make, interest rates fell initially after the CPI report came out, but then they started to go back up, and that's being cited as some of the blame for pushing stocks down. The S&P 500 still remains below support, and we're under 4,500. That's more of a mental level, but the longer we stay around there, the more of a technical level that will become. On a short-term basis, we have the Stoke RSI, the Williams Percent R, only the CCI 20, the 14 has dropped off, and the Stochastics that are giving us extreme negative readings. The dollar was up and interest rates were also up. The 30 to the 5 is still looking more normal where our other yield curves still remain inverted. Sentiment was still positive, it was unchanged at 67. Looking at the condition of our trend, where we are negative, but the ADX is below its moving average. Over the next day or two, we could potentially drop below 20 with that indicator. Our bias is mixed. Even though we had an up day, we did come on the heels of a down day. And I'm keeping our momentum at negative because we've been more negative than positive over the last two, three, four, five days. The economic reports that came out, this was the big one, and I don't have the additional charts. I usually pull them from shadowstats.com. They're having troubles with their website, so I haven't been able to get an updated chart for the last couple of months. But the reading that came out was we were up 0.2% with CPI month over month, which is what was expected. The core CPI, which takes out food and energy, it was also up 0.2% month over month as expected. On a year-over-year -year basis, the total CPI is at 3.2%. Last time it came in at 3%. So this was a bit of a tick up. 
The core CPI came in at 4.7%, a tick down from the 4.8% that we saw last time. Weekly jobless claims came in stronger than expected at 248,000. They expected 230,000. Continuing claims came in at 1.684 million. The Treasury budget showed a minus 220.8 billion. Last time it was at minus 211.1 in the same period when you go back a year ago. Looking at CPI on a year-over-year basis, the blue line is ticking up just slightly but continues to decline. The core rate is also continuing to decline. Looking at services and commodities year-over-year, we look at the services where they're flattening out a little bit and still a bit higher. The core commodities are showing a decline. Looking at our chart where we take the CPI that's seasonally adjusted, here's the 12-month rate of change showing that we did tick up just slightly. And when we look at the rate of change going back one month, it was flat. Looking at the core CPI, where the rate of change over the last 12 months is declining and we were flat on the month over month change. Here's the initial jobless claims just showing the four week average. That's what we tend to follow and I have a different chart to show you. It's kind of hard to make sense of this because of the huge spike here. Also with the initial claims, it's really hard to make sense of this. Continuing claims also kind of difficult to use. So I use our charts. The weekly claims did go back up and the moving average is starting to go up, suggesting maybe there's a little bit of weakness that will be creeping into the employment situation. Continuing claims, however, are still falling. We're below the four week moving average and the line itself continues to decline. When we put all of this together, the red line are the initial claims, which are starting to go back up. Then the blue line are continuing claims, which continue to decline. And then a week ago, we got the unemployment rate, which is now down at 3.5%. Looking at the federal receipts and outlays on a trailing 12-month basis, we're showing a decline in the receipts and a continuation of the advance with the yellow line with outlays. Going through some IsabelNet.com blog charts, here's from Real Investment Advice. This is the real S&P 500, not meaning that there's a fake S&P 500. This just means it takes inflation into account. And then the red line is real GDP, also taking inflation into account, just to give you an idea where we're standing with this right now. Then we look at the risk appetite, which is starting to drop as we're going down lately. Near-term market performance, most folks are expecting the market to continue to decline. Looking at the ISM, how it's diverged meaningfully from equity risk premium, that's the added risk that you take on by owning stocks as opposed to something that doesn't have risk. We're seeing this really decouple from each other where the risk premium is going down and the PMI on a year over year basis is inverted here, but we're showing quite a wide spread between the two. Value stocks are still leading growth over the longer time frame, and we've kind of been seeing that as of late. This chart just shows the blue line going up, meaning that value is outperforming growth. We look at sector fund flows. Money is still going into tech and it's still coming out of energy. Exposure to oil, just about even right now. Folks are jumping back in as it's starting to go back up. So it has been advancing from when it was negative. The M2 money supply to nominal, this is not taking inflation into account, the GDP ratio, showing that there's still an awful lot of money out there. The Fed and the government really just flushed the U.S. economy with all kinds of liquidity and they're starting to rein that back in, but it's still quite high above it when we compare it to nominal GDP. The forward-looking P.E. ratio is still looking optimistic. However, when you compare it to the 10-year yield, there's quite a wide spread between them. You can see other times when they tend to go in the same direction and they tend to not get that far apart from each other. We're also looking at federal government spending, the 12-month rolling sum, where it's continuing to just go sky high. Debt allocation, as of right now, according to Bank of America, we're at 21%. So that means folks are having a tendency to get out of bonds. Edward Yardini had an interesting quote in his email that he sent out, where he said the FOMC, now some call this the Federal Open Market Committee, some call it the Federal Open Mouth Committee, can take the rest of the year off. The federal funds rate is now restrictive enough to bring inflation down without causing a recession, in our opinion. Please note, this is an opinion, but he's a very respected economist. The banking crisis in March, Moody's recent downgrade of several regional banks, and the Fed's latest senior loan officer opinion survey all confirm that credit conditions are tightening. The economic data confirm that the economy remains resilient with the Atlanta Fed's GDP now currently forecasting a 4.1% increase in the third quarter GDP. 
Today's CPI report for July confirms that inflation remains on a moderating trend. Tomorrow's PPI report will likely do the same. That's where he stands right now. Some people would disagree with that. Some people use this as justification for understanding where we're at right now. I just wanted to bring it to your attention. Getting into our charts and analysis, where we did gap higher, we went above R1 and R2. Actually, we hit a high at about 45.25. Then things started to reverse. We saw what looked like a normal pullback. We came back down to R1, hit a little bit of a cliff there, tried to go back up from that point. That wasn't working. Then we came down to the daily pivot, tried to hiccup a little bit higher from there, fell down below the daily pivot, came down to the unchanged level, actually went negative for a while. Then we were able to climb back above the daily pivot only to come back down and pretty much close unchanged. Looking at the 10 minute intraday chart, the futures had been stronger in the initial overnight session. Then they got even stronger than that. They were actually pretty optimistic. Then when the report came out, that shot us higher initially only to see things decline and actually go negative and we're showing a little bit of improvement in the initial overnight session. Looking at large cap growth versus value, they both were just slightly above the unchanged level. So on a closing basis, growth was up a little bit more than value. It was down less for the mid caps and also down less for the small caps. Looking at the intraday chart, and as I've been saying, I'm finding myself watching this quite a bit, where growth did have a good start to the day, then it fell back. But as the market was coming back down, growth seemed to hang in there a little bit, but we did trail off going into the close and just barely being positive for the day. Looking at sentiment, we are seeing a little bit of an increase in fear when looking at the ulcer index. The American Association of Individual Investors came out with their weekly survey. It ticked down just a little bit. They're still positive overall, but not giving an extreme positive reading. We're also watching the red line where it's continuing to show some improvement, but is still below zero. The VIX did decline just slightly based on the line chart as well as the bar chart. Volatility did pick up though, where we saw an increase of the VIX of the VIX, both with the bar chart and the line chart. This is more negative. The five period simple moving average of the equity put call ratio continues to advance. That's negative for the market. Longer term, after getting an extreme negative reading, we're now starting to bounce back up. This goes in the opposite direction of stocks. We're seeing a little bit of weakness here with our longer term equity put call ratio. It's starting to turn back up slightly. It's still in an overall decline, but you can see other times when it declined as well, there might be little hiccups along the way. This line doesn't always just move straight up or straight down, but we want to keep an eye on this. The VIX to move ratio is also showing that there's an increase in volatility. And then I'm also watching this with the VIX to VVIX ratio that I usually only go through in the deep dive video. It's also starting to turn back up. Not necessarily changing yet, but something that we want to keep an eye on, suggesting that we're going from a positive to more of a negative trend according to our VIX studies. Looking at fear on this chart, it did increase slightly and fear has been ticking back up. It's also continuing to increase when we look at our other fear gauge. The ratio between risk on and risk off, it's starting to go down a little bit more now. It hasn't really switched over negative yet, but we had been seeing this really going up and now it's starting to come back down. Advanced decline line studies, we did see a decline based on price and volume, but we're still above the moving averages. The new highs, new lows, we did see a breakout from yesterday's new highs, so that's positive and not a real advance of new lows. That's also positive, but as we've been trailing off with this, our five period is going lower and our 10 period is also going lower. The advanced decline ratio, we're just a little bit below the zero line with the shorter term moving average. We're just a little bit above with the red line, which is our longer term moving average. This is a chart that I'm really starting to watch a lot more closely. We're negative on this chart. Accumulation distribution tries to measure what's the smart money doing. It started to go negative before we saw some weakness in prices. And as we've been bouncing around, it's still continuing to be negative. So this should be a warning sign. And I've added it to the list at the end of the video. The cumulative advanced decline line for the NYSE did tick up just slightly. It's still hanging in there fairly well. We're still above this trend line with our NYSE advanced decline line. Also, even though we're coming down just a little bit, we're still above this upward sloping trend line. The common stock advanced decline line did see a decline based on price and volume. We're also working off of a longer term negative divergence that we saw. The advanced decline line studies did decline with the NYSE, S&P, mid caps and small caps, but they're still above their moving averages. 
keeping an eye on our trend where the red line is ticking back down a little bit and the green line's trying to come back above here. It's really mixed up right now. I'm keeping things the same for right now. We're seeing a weakening trend overall as the ADX is below its moving average. Shorter term, we're seeing the red line actually dropping below the green line and also a weakening trend. We could go below 20 in the next day or two. Volume continues to be below average. Our short term charts, we're not able to get back up above this pivot level. That acted as overhead resistance just above the R2 level that we saw on the intraday chart and closed pretty much near the low. We're still coming down to this other pivot level. Below that, we do have the 50 period moving average. On the bottom, we see where volume is below average. We're below the 20 period simple and exponential moving averages and they are starting to roll over slightly. We're also looking at the rainbow. We're going back inside the rainbow. We're not seeing a lot of flopping over yet with our different lines here, but if we continue to fall, it's gonna mess up this nice little upward slope that we've been seeing on the rainbow chart. The 20 period exponential moving average ticked up slightly. It was flat with the 50 and still is declining with the 200. The Stoke RSI is extreme negative, as is the Williams percent R. The CCI 20 is still extreme negative, but the CCI 14 actually ticked up just a little bit and is no longer extreme. The Stochastics, we are extreme in the short term, intermediate term, and we're declining in the long term and in danger of dropping below the dashed line. The Force Index also showed a little bit of improvement, but is still negative. Intermediate term charts were below the dashed line with the balance of power even though it ticked up slightly. We're still looking more neutral with our go no go system with a lighter shade of blue bars. We're hitting the lower end of our lowest low value and we're below the midpoint and we're seeing the midpoint starting to roll over while the highest high value is really flattening out. We're continuing to look more negative with the TTM squeeze as the oscillator drops below zero. Looking at our moving average tree, we're below the 20 period moving averages, but we're still above the 50 period moving averages. The 20 period open high low close moving average, now it could be acting as resistance. We tried to get back into this mini rainbow, but then we started to fall back down. We're dropping below the midpoint with our standard deviations. We're slowly starting to see this whole wave begin to roll over a little bit, but we're not necessarily extreme negative when we look at this chart. The equi volume turned up just slightly, but is still below zero. That's negative. The S&P McClellan oscillator is not giving an extreme reading. It ticked up just a little bit, but is still below zero. So when we look at the summation index based on price, we are declining as well as volume. The NYSE McClellan oscillator also declining and below zero. So we're declining based on price and volume with the summation index for the NYSE. The Elder Impulse system for the S&P remains negative. The Swellen Trading Oscillator, this could be a point of hope. We're seeing it turn up just slightly based on price and volume, however they're both still below zero. The Parabolic SAR system still remains negative. We're still going lower with the PMO, we're declining based on price and volume. With our PMO studies, we're declining with the PMOs that are rising, we're also declining with the buy signals, and declining with the PMOs that are above zero. The slope oscillator is now dropping below the midpoint. That's turning more negative in the short term. The MACD also continues to decline. So when we look at all of our oscillators, they are showing that momentum is negative. We're dropping below 70 with the BPI, but it really didn't shoot down all that much. However, this is turning more negative after giving us an extreme positive reading. The NYSE bullish percent index is also still above 50, so that's positive, but it is declining. The Chaikin Oscillator, below zero and declining, that's negative. Also, this is another smart money indication that I'm really paying a lot of attention to. We were coming down while the market was still going up and this is continuing to fall off with the Chaikin Money Flow. The Ultimate Oscillator is below 50 and declining. The Vortex, even though it turned down, the red line is still on top, so that's negative. The Money Flow, turned back up slightly but still below 50, that's still negative. The RSI continuing to decline with the 14 period, we were flat but we're below the 50 point. On the 9 period, we're also below 50 and pretty much flat on the day. On balance volume came down to the moving average and bounced back up just a little bit. The percent of stocks in the S&P above their 200 day moving average is continuing to decline. We're also seeing a decline with those stocks above their 50 period moving average. 
our line studies. We're in this new cycle now where it looked like we topped out right around August 1st and we've been seeing overall negativity since. This cycle will end on October 11th. Our trend line study, we drop below the shorter term trend line, but we're still above this longer term trend line. We're wondering if we fall, are we going to hit this trend line? That's still at about 44.50. Our different charts, we're negative pretty much across the board here with the hike in ASHI. The Kegi is negative, the Renko is negative, and the three line break is also negative. Our different indexes, where we're still declining both with the equal weight and the S&P 500 index. The ratio is really not changing all that much. It's pretty much scooting sideways. Looking at Dow theory, we saw a little bit of a tick up with the Dow and the transports and a little bit of a down tick with the utilities. So when we look at our ratio between the transports and the S&P, it did tick up and it's continuing to advance overall. This is positive, but more in the intermediate term time frame. The relationship between the S&P and the transports continues to be quite strong. The ratio between the Dow and the transports, it did come up just slightly, but overall the transports have been outperforming the Dow. Looking at the discretionary versus staples equal weight study, where we were pretty much flat with discretionary, we declined slightly with staples, but overall our ratio did decline, however discretionary continues to outperform staples. The Dow still maintaining support above this pivot level, but the diamonds though have remained at negative for the elders impulse system. The NASDAQ is now dropping down below this S1 level and dealing with its 50 period moving average. We're watching this to see if this may provide some support. But when we look at the Fibonacci chart, we have dropped below the 61.8% retracement and now we continue to be below that. If we turn around and start to go back up, is this gonna offer overhead resistance? Looking at the cumulative new highs and new lows for the NASDAQ, they are turning up slightly, but when we look at the raw score down below, we continue to be negative. We're also coming down below the previous high. We're coming down to this S1 level. We're also coming down to the 50 period moving average. Is this gonna produce some kind of a bounce for the NASDAQ and the NASDAQ 100? We're seeing a convergence of those support levels. The cues for the Elder Impulse System though remain negative. The NASDAQ 100 BPI is continuing to decline but it's still above 50. And longer term, we're still seeing negative momentum with the NASDAQ 100. The ratio between the Qs and the Dow shows that the Qs are really starting to underperform the Dow, but their relationship remains very strong. Small caps, just a little bit below this pivot level now. You could say the support is holding on this chart. We're looking a little more positive here after a recent golden cross, but the RSI is declining and the MACD continues to decline. We're wondering if the small caps are going to come down and test the 50 period moving average. The elders impulse system for the small caps continues to be negative and the ratio dropped off just a little bit when we compare small caps with the S&P 500. It is also in a longer term decline. The small caps did see a little bit of a bounce up when we compare growth to value, but in the shorter term we're pretty much negative, longer term we're still in an uptrend. With the mid caps, we did drop below this pivot point. Will we come down and test this 50 period moving average on this index? The mid caps also remain negative for the elders impulse system. When we look at mid cap growth versus value, it ticked up slightly. It's been chopping sideways in the shorter term, but longer term it's still in an uptrend. The dollar was up slightly and it's still above 102. The FANG index is now dropping below the 50 period moving average. Is this support breaking? Will we be able to get that back? And then longer term, after setting an all-time high, we've been falling back and seeing some weakness with the FANG index. The banks, still dealing with their 200 day moving average, we closed just below it. The financial sector though, is still generating a recent golden cross. The ratio between the financials and the S&P was pretty much flat and continued to decline in the longer term. The regional banking ETF did decline when compared to the financial sector and also continue to be in a decline. Keeping an eye on bonds, we really saw them go all over the place. Yields ended up closing higher on the day and that was one of the reasons given for spooking stocks. Where we did see a decline based on price, the RSI is below 50 and declining, the MACD after trying to improve is now starting to roll back over negative. We're also keeping an eye on this. This is a bit of a concern where we're seeing this ratio going up. We want to see this ratio going down. The 30 to the 5 year is still looking more normal. It could drop back and go inverted at any time. 
This is another thing that I noticed when I look at the one month yield and subtract the three month yield, we're starting to go positive here. The last time when we saw this gyration was right around the debt ceiling crisis. Is something lurking in the background that is causing these markets to act out of character? We're also above where we were at back in 2007 with the three month yield and it has been continuing to climb even though it ticked down slightly on Thursday. Our longer term charts were rolling over a bit with the special K but we're still above the red line. The PPO study is still looking okay in the long term, seeing some intermediate term weakness and we're dropping below zero with the short term. We're still below the resistance level with the S&P 500 weekly chart here. Is this going to hold and are we going to see more follow through weakness? Seeing pretty much that same thing with the NASDAQ 100. We're dropping below this resistance line. An update of our possible positive scenarios. Nothing really strong happened here. The Qs are underperforming the S&P. Discretionary is coming down to the moving average compared to the S&P. Large cap growth is underperforming large cap value. Our growth to value ratios showing an underperformance with the large caps, mid caps, and small caps. This is positive though. The S&P to utilities ratio is continuing to hang in there even though it declined a little bit. This has in the past given some good support to the S&P. If this continues to go up, will that help the S&P 500? We're still below zero now when we look at the five period moving average of the Amex, NASDAQ, and NYSE. This had been hanging out above zero, but for the last few days it's dropped below zero. We're also seeing a decline with the 10 day average of the S&P 500 highs minus the lows. We were camped out extreme positive when things were looking better. Now we're starting to see a decline. We're also seeing a decline in this chart. When we look at the 19 day exponential moving average of the advanced decline ratio, we're still continuing to be below zero based on price and volume. The 50 period exponential moving average of the new highs minus the new lows, it is rolling over a little bit, but it's still above zero. We're below the moving average on our indicator chart showing that the red line is beginning to roll over a bit. When we look at S&P growth versus value, it did outperform in Thursday's session. In the shorter term, we continue to pretty much be sideways to negative. Longer term, we're still in an uptrend. Looking at the Staples to S&P 500 ratio, it was pretty much unchanged, but it has been declining overall. This often gives good support to the S&P. And then looking at what Tom Bally came up with for the month of August, energy tends to be weak, where tech tends to be hot, where we're coming up into the middle part of August now, where historically he has seen positive returns going forward before we see some weakness going into the latter part of the month. He also suggests that in the month of August is when growth starts to outperform value. We're seeing a little bit of that, but we're not seeing any real strength in those ratios. So what's our outlook for Friday? Most of the earnings that are coming out from S&P 500 companies should be completed by Friday's close. The technicals are negative and we continue to be below support. We will get the PPI and then we'll get the preliminary reading of consumer sentiment. We're also keeping an eye on all the different geopolitical events. Right now for the markets, it's about inflation and interest rates. Here's the updated economic calendar showing how we will get PPI and consumer sentiment. Looking at our Stock Traders Almanac statistics, we are neutral to negative with the Dow and S&P, where we're neutral to positive with the NASDAQ. There were some new charts posted by Jeffrey Hirsch, who runs Stock Traders Almanac after his father started the company. This looks at the four-year presidential election cycle from 1949 going up to 2022. The solid colored lines, especially the green one, that's from 2021 to 2023. And then the dashed lines are more of what has happened historically, where going forward from here, looking at the green line, we do see some historical strength coming at this point. Then we see a little bit more weakness and then some strength going into the end of the year. He also posted another updated chart here. We've been watching this for the NASDAQ. Are we gonna get beyond this point in the NASDAQ and start to see a bounce from here? Both the NASDAQ and the NASDAQ 100 are dealing with their 50 day moving average. That could be considered to be a successful test if we're able to bounce up off of that and possibly turn things back a little more positive. That's what a lot of people are waiting for, especially when we dropped below the 20 period moving averages. Now we're coming down to the 50 period moving averages. What's going to happen there? Are we going to fall through those levels or are we going to bounce up off of those levels? Then the pre-election year in the aggregate cycle from 1949 to 2022. This is where we're at right now, which is the purple line. Then we're keeping an eye on the green line, which is the pre-election after midterm bear, which is what happened to us. 
We're right here in August where we see some initial weakness and then we tend to see some strength going forward. We're wondering if that's going to happen this time. We will be on the ninth trading day of the month where we do see some strength when we're looking at pre-election years. We see a little bit of strength to more neutral when we're looking at all of the years taken together. So our scenario, still leaning towards a down one. Our charts are suggesting that. Our technicals are negative and we're below support. We need to be proven otherwise that things are going to turn back more positive. Unless that happens, we're still leaning towards the negative side. So we're not going with the up scenario for right now. We're not going with the sideways trend for now. Even though the ADX is dropping, it's below its moving average. Over the next day or two, it could cross below the 20 level where it's showing that we're going from a trending environment to a non-trending environment. The warning signs, we did see a convergence of these short-term bearish signals. That's kind of what led up to this. Longer-term trend signals may be signaling a top. For right now, the S&P and NASDAQ are below that longer-term resistance level. Seasonally and historically, we're coming into a weak time of the month, but we could also be shifting over into a more positive time, at least for the month of August. The S&P 500 oscillators are negative, as well as the NASDAQ 100 oscillator. The VIX is showing complacency, but it is starting to climb on down days. And I've added this, the accumulation distribution as well as the shaken money flow, they're suggesting that the smart money is not really coming in and doing a lot of buying right now. Small caps and mid caps have closed below secondary support. That's what I'm calling the pivot levels that we watch. We've been watching the NASDAQ, NASDAQ 100, and the S&P. They're below support. We're seeing a little bit of a deterioration of the small caps and mid caps also starting to go below support. The cumulative new highs, new lows for the NASDAQ continue to show weakness. We're still above the three month yield back where we were back in 2007. S&P 500 growth is weakening, but it's still in an uptrend. The weekly pivot chart, I didn't show that this time. We hit that over two weeks ago now, and that's when we started to see the real decline. The parabolic SAR is negative and the vortex is negative. And then earnings season is more on a case by case basis. The positive signs, we do have the seasonality and setups that remain in the background. Our special K chart, even though it's rolling over a bit, is still positive. The longer term equity put call ratio is also starting to turn up a little bit, but it's still positive. The S&P remains above the downtrend channel upper line. We're still in a risk on posture, but that is starting to show some weakness. The S&P is outperforming utilities. The NASDAQ and NASDAQ 100, they broke out above resistance. They have not been able to break out above daily resistance. The Staples to S&P 500 ratio is declining. The Russell as well as the small cap index and the mid caps have generated recent golden crosses. Small and mid cap growth continues to be positive. The financial sector has generated a recent golden cross. So our conclusion, we're negative and below support overall. In the short term, we're negative, and you could make a suggestion that we're slightly oversold. We will be keeping an eye on those 50-day moving averages for the NASDAQ and NASDAQ 100. The intermediate term, we're just still negative. Long term, we're positive because we're above the 200-day simple moving average. Thank you. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you in the next video.